Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the top 5 architectures in BDA and along with that we'll be discussing the other architectures as well. What all you need to keep in mind from exam point of view and uh, if you watch this video till the end you'll get to know how exactly you have to remember all the architectures and what are the key points you have to uh, focus upon and so that you can make the architectures in, uh, in an easy manner and uh, what does the different architectures have in common. Okay, so all these uh, points will be discussed in depth. So make sure hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and without wasting any more time let's get started and this link can be also found in the description box where uh, you can download the document where in which all the architectures are there okay so let's get started an architecture like this will be uh, creating I'm just kidding we'll be having to uh, create different types of architectures in BDS. so let's have a look at that so uh, modular wise will be going so what is the first uh, is the how to make the best architecture the easy way to remember and the most repeated architectures all these key points will be discussed so stay tuned in the module one it's uh, basically regarding the introduction you have to remember it in this form like in a story wise first what's the starting parts uh, and the middle part and the ending part so module one the first architecture which you will be learning is regarding the evolution of big data how did big data evolve from the starting stage till the ending stage okay so uh, you have to make two axes here the first axis is the data size which is from the uh, least data to the highest data and second you have to draw uh, write three things simple and complex and this is the highest complex level so in this way the data is increasing both in the size and in the complexity done and here we'll be writing a triangle kind of thing and inside that what we'll be writing is the uh, enterprise data platform enterprise resource platform web data and the big data so as it is increasing the scale is also increasing first it was just for an enterprise then it became for the web then it became for the big data okay like that you have to keep on increasing and write some things about it okay so this was about the big data evolution they can ask it uh, along with the question what's the need of big data okay and the types of big data like structured and structured and all so make sure you know this diagram very well super important question from exam point of view next we have different types of computing not uh, custom actually it is computing okay so three different uh, types of computing are there based on the scale values so the least uh, scale value which is a distributed computing it is loosely coupled heterogeneous and single administration there will be a single administrator in between and all the data will be loosely coupled together it is not tightly coupled like in the cluster computing you'll be having a cluster wherein all the data and the data nodes will be in a single cluster and they'll be cooperatively working the largest scale is the grid computing in which we will be having the cross organizational geographical distribution and the management is also distributed means it's not about a single administrator there will be multiple administrators who will be managing the data so that was about the different types of uh, computing moving on we have the uh, most uh, important uh, first uh, architecture which is that in the from the top five the first architecture which is the file layer a big data architecture to remember this uh, diagram in a more depth manner what you actually have to do is first you have to see how big the data is how big the architecture is it has five layers and in the five layers you have some other boxes also here okay so this exactly you have to make it like this only why because if you make it something slightly and the person who is correcting the exam paper corrects it according to the uh, scheme which is given then you will be losing marks okay why because in the scheme you have to exactly make it like this only so uh, how to easily make it uh, like this is follow these stepwise uh, instructions which i uh, tell you first find out how many layers are there five layers are there then the first layer is the uh, getting of data or identifying the data okay once you identify the data you have to clean the data like uh, think an example you went to a gold mine there you cannot get the directly 24 karat gold you will be getting gold along with many other materials in that so you have to clean those uh, things to get the gold right so that is what data ingestion and acquisition you will be cleaning the data you will be applying some process to make the data clean now you have cleaned the data you have your gold with you you will be storing that gold somewhere that is the next one data storage after you have store the data your next step is to do some processing on it means just like this gold if you give in in an irrelevant shape to a woman the woman won't uh, like that the woman likes what ring or earrings or the necklace or the um whatever different ornaments are there like in some shape it should be right so that is what is called data processing you'll be making in a beautiful shape or doing some processing on it so it is uh, usable when you will be using it it will be for the data consumption means for the customers to buy it right in the same way you have to remember these five uh, process repeat with me the first is the identification second is the uh, cleaning or the ingestion and acquisition of data third is after you have cleaned the data you will store it somewhere then you will process something on it so it will be more useful when it is useful you will be doing the data 
data um, consumption. Then, after you have known these five steps, you have to know what is happening here. In this, basically, you can find four or three blocks based on the level. Here, I have three, three, three blocks. Here, I have four, four blocks. Okay. So, uh, basically, it's not uh, required that you need to make four only here. Just three steps you have to keep in mind. What's happening there? What are the tools getting used? And what is the output we are getting? That three things only discussed there. Okay. So, in the least one, what you have, you are getting the data. So, you'll be writing sources for ingestion of data. What you're doing with the data, push or pull the data. Database types are given, like the web, web or the service or the file format. And the formats are structured or unstructured. So basic introduction regarding what kind of data it is. Then we have this process for uh, using it more better way. First you have extraction and load. Then you have data semantics to be keep in mind. Pre-processing the data. Then ingestion of data from the real sources or batches. Then we have the different uh, formats in which it is stored. Like uh, it can be NoSQL, it can be Hadoop, it can be Mesos, it can be Spark. It can be applied many different techniques. All these things are written here. Can go through it. Then we have the three main things: Hive, Pig, and the MapReduce. Those three things are happening here. Finally, at the most output layer, we'll be doing two things, which is a visualization and the report uh, reporting. By doing these three things, you'll be getting some discovery on the knowledge of what it is used. And finally, you will be exporting it to the cloud as well or the web wherever you want to. So in this way, you have to remember, make sure you write it 100 times in practice. Super important question from exam point of view. Let's move on to the uh, next question in the module one, which is Berkeley stack data analysis. Here you have to remember three things which you are doing. First, we get the data, we process it, we use it. Get, process, use, right? Input, process, output, like that. Get, a process, use. First, you get the data from the data storage. Even if it is there, don't mind that. What I'm telling you, listen that. Data storage is here, right? So you're getting the data from somewhere, you're storing it. Then what you're doing, you're processing it in some engine. After the data is uh, ready to be used, you're applying, uh, applying somewhere. But this cannot be in a structured manner unless something is managing it. So here you'll be having the management stuffs going on, okay? Now you have to make these four uh, things here. Then uh, for that, what are the tools getting used? For the processing, you are mainly using the YARN, which is a resource manager. We'll be learning about this in the upcoming module. YARN is the main thing which uh, actually manages the data. HDFS is the Hadoop distributed file storage. In Spark, you'll be using the processing engine and in the application, you'll be using Apache. Just remember this one, you're not robots to so remember all this. Just remember this one, Apache. Done. Next, moving on to the module two, we have the super important question, Hadoop core components. The first question in the module two, Hadoop core components, this diagram you have to make. Remember four things. The first is the common libraries and the utilities, whatever you need to execute something. After that, you need to store it somewhere. For that, you will be using the Hadoop storage. You have yarn here for the resource management purpose and you have MapReduce here. Close your eyes and tell. In between, you have the common libraries and the utilities. Just go up, you will be having HDFS storage. Come to the right side, you will be having yarn. Come to the left side, you will be having MapReduce. Done. Moving on, we have the Hadoop ecosystem components. Here, basically, you have to explain what are the usages of different components. Okay, first, you have to start from the HDFS storage. You'll be storing something. Then, you'll be using the MapReduce to reduce the data because uh, big data is a very big data. We want to reduce the data so that it will be easy to uh, apply and transfer the data. When your data is reduced, then what you'll be doing is managing the data using YARN. You'll be managing this data. After that, you are uh, using some data flow languages like PIG and Hive to make it the work flow and uh, turning it into the application purpose after you have done that you will be doing the application layer like the visualization and the reporting then these uh, four uh, layers you have to make here and write these content present here it's just regarding what are the tools uh, present here go through it next we have the hadoop physical organization here you have three types of nodes how many nodes you have in hadoop three nodes are there the first is the client node which sends some request that will be sent to the name node which will be having the master and the name node will be handling some other nodes called as slave nodes. What does the client node do is it will send a request. To send a request, what you need? You need Hive, Pig or Mahout or the application and the command line. By using these tools, you'll be sending a request, right? And it will be sent to the name node which has a master category here and it has slave category here. In master category, you have name node, job tracker and zookeeper. The secondary name node just acts as an assistant to the primary master. Done with the top diagram. Coming to the down diagram, we have the slave nodes which is having the three main things task tracker data node and map reduce okay for these three things you have to ask the data it has to store the data it has to do the map reduce process right so those those are the three things we'll be doing in the um bottom most layer so three things are there what is that client node name node and uh, slave uh, name node has the master as well as the slave node in slave node you have task and data and map reduce done
along with that uh, some one of the question which can be asked is the hdfs command so for the commands you need to remember four commands make directory put list copy done make directory put list copy and this thing you don't need to remember as such just remember add hdfs then write mkdir then write some path here put again the same thing ls and cp just you need to remember what these terms mean and write a sample path one time you'll have in the in your mind and remember these four commands it's worth eight marks okay it, it is not asked separately it will be asked with, along with another question but writing just four lines of code and getting a huge amount of marks is a very worth uh, topic learning so make sure you learn this very well moving on we have the um next super important topic which is yarn based execution model yarn i already told you what it is resource management platform resource management platform you have the resources you have to manage it to manage the resources first you need to know what you are going to manage the client will be sending the request what is needed to be managed and resource manager will be sending it to the node managers so that it gets divided huge thing cannot be uh, handled by one person there should be a team so resource managers team include uh, the node managers which uh, which also has the containers and the amis amis is the application manager instances containers store the data by using all of this you will be able to uh, manage the resources and uh, tell to the uh, computer what time which process has to be executed and how much storage it requires finally the output will be sent back to the client okay this is about the yarn based execution model super important question next we have the map reduce example they will be asking you what is the properties of map reduce or what is map reduce what are the features what are the uh, architecture workflow and example so example i'll be discussing here the architecture actually is in the module 4 i'll be discussing in depth what are the steps to be followed make sure you know this very well the example very simple even if it is not clear listen to me you'll get to know what's uh, happening here we have first as input okay map reduce what it does it will map and reduce okay it will map and reduce done now we have input here input will be having a few lines of code here it's written welcome to hadoop class hadoop is and good hadoop is bad sentence doesn't make sense we don't care about that what we care about is marks once you get an input here you have to split that input into different sentences the first sentence will go here second sentence third sentence and fourth sentence then after you have split the input you have to count how many times each word has occurred in this sentence welcome has occurred one time two has occurred one time and hadoop has occurred one time like that you will be writing for all of these and you will be gathering the similar words in one places okay like bad where all it was occurred how many times it was occurred class how many times it was occurred good how many times it was occurred hadoop how many times it was occurred hadoop was occurred here also here also and here also three times three times it has occurred so we'll be writing hadoop one hadoop one and hadoop one after you have done that we'll be reducing it reducing means what see three times writing is a stupidity so we need to write hadoop and just write three there so we'll be adding up how many times it has occurred and we'll be associating just one number with that after you have done that just reduce the whole thing into a small um, thing because small things are uh, what we like right we don't want this much big things so final output will be a very small thing which is just having how many words have occurred how many times make sure this practice this very well it's a very uh, highly weighted question so don't miss uh, this at any cost going on we have the apache scoop here two things are there import and export what does uh, scoop do it does the data flow of the language okay so uh, you'll be having some data here it will gather gather the metadata it will be sent to the map and it will be stored in, uh, in the hgfs storage if you're storing into the storage it is called as importing importing storing into the storage if you are exporting it you are taking it from the storage as in this case diagram is same just you have to reverse the arrows and you will get four marks for import four marks for export write a few lines regarding that then moving on we have the apache flume now, this is also used for the data flow language here we'll be having the web server finally we have the hdfs there is a web server where all the data is stored we are getting the data from that and storing it somewhere okay for that three processes are followed source channel sync source will gather the data from the web server and channel will pass it through the sync and the sync will uh, take and uh, see if the data is relevant or not and it will store into the hdfs storage okay just this uh, thing you have to make there are multiple diagrams for this as well for that you have to watch the theory video moving on to the module 3 the most important uh, one is the like uh, most important one will come later i'll tell you what's the most important one moving on we have the uh, cap theorem first cap means consistency availability and partition both from the theory perspective and the diagram it's important question okay so cap theorem what it basically does is consistency means it should always be available whenever we need it and availability also means the same just that in consistency it should be available at every moment okay 
and partition tolerance means even if the data is partitioned it should be tolerant so some examples are given what is the example for consistency and availability is rdbms mysql and availability and partition we have the coach db and consistency and partition tolerance we have the mongodb so different kinds of uh, data are there the more tools are there you can go through it moving on we have the key value pair a very important question for example interview you just have to make key and values for each key you have an associated value that's all what you have to remember keys are here and the values consist these following data same goes for mayuri moving on we have the csv example they can ask you directly about the write about some few keywords about the csv then what you are supposed to do right what is csv and write this example csv means comma separated values here you have some values which are what comma separated semester subject code subject name and grade and write some semester subject code subject name and grade that's what consists of a csv example moving on we have the xml in xml you will be using these kind of tags okay um triangle tags okay like the angular tags and inside that you will be writing some things and inside that if you want to open another uh, set of um, uh, angular bracket tags you will be opening it in this form okay this is what is called xml in json we have the uh, names and uh, uh, values associated like just how we wrote for the key value pair so how many uh, you want at least you, uh, you can add three like total price purchase date and country and some values you can write associate with that and it should be uh, based on the colon between the key and the value and the different types of instances should be separated by comma and the whole should be there in the angular braces then that was about the json example next you have the sn architecture shared nothing architecture here nothing is shared okay four things are there you need to keep in mind the first is a single uh, server you will have the application and you will be having the server and uh, this is a, a very large uh, distributed server this is single server distributed server distributed server will have a large data set here and that will be divided into small small servers then we have the mongo uh, db which is the client master and the um, client node okay like master slave node uh, type of representation here we have the client here we have the mongo clients which will get the data from the uh, client and it will be passed to the mongo uh, slaves okay so um, mongo is the client and mongodb is the server here you can find mongodb 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 is nothing but the server and it will be giving the task to the clients and it will be doing not the clients uh, the slaves okay that was about the uh, master slave and this is about the um, both read and write operations happening at the same time here the same diagram which you saw, saw uh, here right just that it is not single arrow it is double arrow here and all these things consist of one another one repeat another one repeat just number of change one two after what uh, one two comes three after one two three comes right so that's what you will be writing node one node two node three that was about the SN architecture. Moving on, we have the module four. So the uh, most important one was about the key value pair and the SN architecture. Okay. Moving on to the module four, what we have is the map reduce uh, and high when pick. Three things are there: map reduce, high when pick. In map reduce, you have to remember just this concept: input, map reduce, output. Input, map reduce, output. Like everything what we do: input and um, process and output, right? So in process, we have the map reduce. Okay. Now this explained in the uh, depth why you have to uh, write. They can ask you for the workflow as well as for the diagram so make sure you know this very well it can consist of 8 to 12 mark question so map reduce processing steps you'll be having the data from the hdfs input you'll be splitting the data into different types of records mapping it and then combining it then you will do a simple step which is the reduce for reduce you need to sort the data and shuffle that data then you will reduce and send to the output file to the hdfs simple input split read record map combine for the uh, reduction, you will be doing the sorting thing, shuffling thing, and then you will be sending it to the output file. Then we have the Hive architecture. The uh, most important one for module 4 was the map reduce. In Hive architecture, what we have, it can be either as the architecture or the uh, workflow or both they can ask. Okay. Architecture have to make six uh, rectangles. This one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. You can ask uh, what, what is this? I'll tell you later. This one, uh, first you have to uh, start from the web web browser web interface then what is the first web browser and web interface then we have the user what does user do it will do the uh, commands how it will do the command by using command line interface so these two things you have and here we have the server things which is application jdbc application and hive server and all these things will be passed to the driver meta store to the database okay easy driver meta store to the database driver meta store to the database that's got in your mind right Moving on, we have the Hive integration workflow steps. Here you have to apply a common sense technique. User will send some data to the driver. It will check for the syntax and send to the compiler. Compiler will uh, get the data from the meta store. It will pass to the execution engine. And from there, the MapReduce tux will happen. And then it will go back to the user interface. 
repeat with me from the user interface it will send to the driver which will check for the compilation error it will send to the um, meta store and it will go uh, go back to the execution engine from there it will go to the meta uh, map reduce again it will go back to the execution engine to the user client so that was about the uh, hive workflow and the last one which is the uh, pig workflow let's have a look at that here also the same thing you have to use your common sense pig latin script it is getting sent some script is getting sent and to the pig server and grunt shell from there you will be taking it to the parser which will check for the syntax along with the optimizer and compiler it will be sent to the execution engine then map reduce done Moving on, we have to the uh, up to the module five. Here we have the most important concept as the web and task. Okay, web uh, mining and the uh, text mining. Okay, so we'll come back to that. It's in the part two. Before that, we have some super important questions, which is the a priori algorithm. You have to know this algorithm very well. What's the theory video for this explanation? So here we have the example which is taken. Each of these um, uh, ranks and the IDs are given for each of these item sets. And for these item sets, you'll be having some support count. Means how many times A has appeared, how many times B has appeared, how many times C. And and so on all the support will be uh, taken here and the support which is less than some uh, value that will be removed and whatever is remaining after combining the things you'll be uh, writing here make sure you know this diagram very well moving on we have the linear and non-linear relationship linear means increasing in a straight uh, manner non-linear means it's not increasing in a straight manner as you can observe it's like a curve type okay that is linear and non-linear you have in the regression models you have to draw this diagram we have the text mining process which is regarding the how to um, <coughs> take the a very um, mixed up test uh, text and uh, by using that you will be making it clean text okay how you'll do that pre-processing is the first step you'll be cleaning the data just remember one word okay cleaning the data from here feature generation means you're getting the extracting the relevant features selecting the relevant features mining the data and then analyzing the results what is inside that you have to write that's uh, basically common sense okay what you have to write here cleanup process tokenization pos tagging word sense ambiguation parsing uh, me reading those things is uh, time waste uh, because you have to read it by yourself and get to know how much you can keep it in your memory what i am telling is first you'll clean the data select the features then use the data that's all don't keep anything else in mind okay moving on we have the next one which is the web in web you have three categories how many cat uh, categories you have three categories in the web web content mining web structure mining web user mining sounds similar let's see what's the difference web content mining means what is the content present in the web it can be either the text form image form audio form video form or the table form the mining of that means what is relevant in these features that you are getting that is called as web content mining web structure mining means you'll be having a structure like first you'll be writing the tags then you'll be writing some things in the hyperlinks links or the image tags will be applying all these things will be there you're mining that means you're getting to know what are the patterns in that web usage mining means according to you what do you watch what do you uh, surf in web how much time which part of the day you will be uh, more active on web all those things which websites use it all those things is called web usage mining by this uh, the algorithm will be able to learn in a more better way what is your uh, taste in the web right next we have the uh, like see in these three the most important is the web usage mining so they can ask a specific question regarding this only what is web usage mining three things you have to write here again the same thing processing discover a pattern analyze it first process it discover a pattern analyze it process discover and analyze then what is inside that that you have to read okay so that was about the module 5 the super important one is about the web mining and uh, uh, web usage mining so know this diagrams very well super important question for more information what the theory video in that i have explained what are the super tips you need to keep in mind for remembering this one okay so uh, then we have the page rank it's not that important just that uh, which uh, page is more visited uh, that will be assigned a greater rank so this kind of structure you have to make in which all the pages are there and the ranks are also present and the arrows means the links from which page you're going to which page then we have the hubs and authorities hubs are these uh, things and authorities are to which page it is going okay so how do you make the architecture in easy steps so step one is analyze the size of it whichever architecture you're going to memorize analyze the size of the architecture for example in this uh, you have to first keep in mind how many layers are there five layers are there then get into depth what are these layers and what is happening in that what are the important keys in that get process and use you're getting the data you're processing it here and you're using it here after you get a brief overview you can easily connect to the points which uh, category it belongs if you have three categories get process and use you'll assign the first layer to get 
second third and fourth layer to use uh, process and the fifth layer to the use in that way you'll be able, able to uh, keep in mind the order of the layers okay if you don't use this uh, thing you might get confused with what happens first what happens next that's why go in the order in the story wise after that you have to write how much content uh, per layer what does the layer is doing you have to get to know um, what actually is written here here three parts are there in each of these parts some things are happening what is happening what are the tools and what is the output you are getting so those three things are the uh, those three are the things you have to keep in mind then uh, you'll be able to easily uh, memorize this uh, diagram the same thing you have to apply for all just get to know what it is and uh, note down the key points okay then uh, what is the step for there is no step for you have to write it and draw 100 times then only you will get to know in the mind so if you found this video helpful make sure the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next